but let's talk about the Sew Together 21 pattern for July, which was the Hot Patterns Sunny Side Up Hat. Ta-da! This was voted on by everyone on Instagram to be our Sew Together 21 pattern for July. And as people's makes started rolling in, I started to get a lot of questions and also people were expressing that their hats, well, a lot of people, turn, turns out their hats ended up too small. So I thought I would do this video today to kind of help you figure out how to make a sunny side hat pattern that fits, that's adjustable as it should be, and that it looks like you want it to look. Because I think whenever you start cutting out your fabric and you know doing all the construction, you're like, you don't realize really what's going where until you get it all put together, okay? So first things first, let's talk about cutting out the pattern. I, let's see if I can show you this. Um, when I printed mine out at 100%, the edges of my paper, which I don't think anything is gonna show that better than this. Um, the edges of my paper looked like this. You can see this here. There were no dots, there were nothing, there was nothing indicating where things should be lined up. And so I was like, man, should I overlap the pages? But when I started to look closer at the writing, it looked like a portion, like these two things weren't supposed to be on top of each other. There's like words missing, there's a space missing. So I decided to butt my pages right up against each other and not overlap them at all. You can see on the back, they're not overlapped at all and they're just butted up against each other. And when you do that, I mean, it's not a lot, but it's definitely a quarter to three eighths of an inch that you gain back by doing it that way. I don't know if the way that, that it's printed is funky, but it worked for me. And this pattern piece, which is completely just within one page, this pattern piece is the top and it's set in perfectly to everything else. So I do think that if your pattern prints and there's like words missing, the pages are meant to be butted up together and not overlapped at all. And if you do overlap them, you know how it adds up, you know, three eighths of an inch here, there and everywhere. And all of a sudden, like you've made a hat for a toddler. Um, okay, so that's the first thing, but your pattern pieces up against each other after they get printed. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was fabric choice. Okay, so it does require two fabrics, right? You have one for your outer, one for the sash, and then you have your lining fabric. So when I was thinking, doing this, I was like, oh, lining, I'm just gonna match the lining to the sash. But what happens is you can see the lining a lot. So that could, I, like, I'm okay with that because my lining matches my fabric so well. But if you've got two prints, or you've got colors that aren't exactly the same, you might want to cut this brim piece. You might wanna cut both the main and the lining out of the same fabric, just so like, for example, on mine, that gingham would be showing underneath as well. You can also see that I cut my gingham on the bias because I was worried that it was gonna compete with the grid on the side. Uh, wait, let me make sure I did that right. Side, no, side got cut on the bias. This got cut on the straight green. But as you can see, whenever you have this huge like sash thingy, it doesn't really matter. So I might not have gone through that trouble. Certainly it takes more fabric to cut something on the bias. Um, so if you've got a directional print, consider the bias, but I don't think that it's absolutely positively necessary because you have so much of this. All right, the next tip is in terms of construction. So this hat is deemed a advanced beginner skill level hat. You can see it there. And I agree with that. Getting the crown set in to the hat with the lining, the way that they want you to do it is very complicated. Um, basically you have to sandwich this crown piece in between the lining and the main fabric, and then you're sewing around this circle. It's all very complicated. All right, so to make this more beginner friendly than 
it currently is, which is not very beginner friendly at all. We need to make two versions of the hat. We're gonna make a lining, which is this one that has the lining fabric on top. So this is how you construct both the lining and the outer part of the hat. First things first, you sew the side piece. You sew this side, you cut this on the folds, and then you sew this here along this 5 8 inch seam allowance and then you end up with this little round circle like this. Then right sides together, so this has to go wrong side out, match up your notch with the seam that you just made, match up the other notch, which is on the other side of the crown piece with the other notch on the side piece side piece and then you kind of just fill in the rest anyways this all gets eased in and what you end up with is something that looks like this so you have your crown piece sewn in to your side piece all right then once you have that sewn on now it's time to sew your brim on so you will have this right side out and of course the crown will be sewn in you take your brim piece, you start pinning the raw edges together all the way around. All right, so now I have essentially two hats. I have an inside of a hat and the outside of a hat. Your lining goes inside out <clears throat> like so. And then your main hat, your main fabric goes right on top of that. So we've got wrong sides touching, all right? And you just wanna match up your seam allowance that's going through the uh, center back of your side piece and your uh, brim uh, seam allowances for both of them are gonna get pressed up toward the side piece and then your brim is going to get matched up. Again, we're wrong sides together. So we have all of our raw edges completely touching. So you want to go to your sewing machine. You want to baste around your brim, basting your lining and your main hat together along this edge here. Take our bias binding. I'm using purchase bias binding because honestly, there is no reason for you to make your own. It takes more fabric, it's a lot more fiddly, and let's just use, let's just use the purchase stuff. It's nice, it's uh, because it's so stiff. Like normally I don't like this for garments, but for hats and bags and stuff, this stiff polyester, whatever fabric it is that they're using to make these, actually really, it really is nice. All right, let me show you what that looks like. All right, so moving right along, all we have left is the little sash tie thing. Um, I went ahead and basted the side pieces together. Your sash is gonna cover this up, so don't worry about what that really looks like. But take your pattern sash piece, cut it out on the fold like you're supposed to, and then fold your fabric right sides together on the long ways. And you are gonna sew it from this notch <clears throat> all the way down and around. And when you do that, you have, this is where the notch is, and I've sewn all the way down here and came across. You uh, trim all this back, cut up your corner, and then turn it right side out. And when you do that, you have a pretty finished edge, unlike that crazy hemming that they um, wanted us to do. So let me get this side caught up with that side and I'll show you how to attach. We have this like section here between the notches that is unsewn. This is what gets attached to your, the intersection of your brim and your side. So this would come and it would get sewn all along this edge here, like so, right? And then get, when you're done with that, then it gets turned up And now you have a sash that looks like this. All right, and when you're done with that, admittedly, it looks <laughs> a little messy, but you just turn it up. And then when you go to tie your hat, 
zhuzh it up nice. This comes down and then when you go to tie your hat, it all just kind of gets sucked in, <laughs> for lack of a better term, and looks like a thousand times better. My next tip for making it easier is to eliminate the crown. Um, you could totally make this like, I guess it'd be more like a visor at that point. If you remove the crown, right, like there's no crown piece, then all you have is the side and the brim, and that is a lot easier to sew together. You could do your bias binding around this raw edge here if you wanted, or you could sew them right sides together and turn it out. But also you could reduce the height of the brim, or no, reduce the height of the side by like half, and then look what you have. You have a little cutie, a little hat like this, which is a lot more like a visor, um, I don't think I can put it on my head <laughs> properly to show you guys because the, there's fabric there, but you get the idea, right? You have a little thing in your little head, the crown of your own head or your ponytail or your top knot or whatever will be coming out of the top here. So that's another really cute way to make it beginner friendly and make it super, super. My tips for making it like, see how mine is so, so, so structured. That is a hundred percent due to fabric choice and more importantly, interfacing. I interface this guy a lot. I used the Heat and Bond Fusible Iron-On Heavy Weight for jackets and waistbands. This is the Iron-On Interfacing. I ironed on to every piece other than the crown. So the side pieces have it, the brim has it. In addition, inside the brim, I inserted the Heat and Bond Heavy Weight Stabilizer. It's a sew-in product, but when you get it in there, it really creates a nice stiff brim. Going back, I might do two uh, layers, two applications of the um, heavyweight iron-on in the brim just to make sure the brim stays because when I wear it, the brim does still want to kind of flop down a little bit, which is cute, but I kind of want it to stay stuck out like this and it keeps wanting to do this. I want it to be more like this and it wants to do this. So I do think that if I um, added a little another layer of interfacing of the heat and bond um, heavyweight interfacing, that will be just enough. But the stabilizer plus the sew in is the key to making this super stiff. You really need to stiffen it up as much as you possibly can to get that brim to stay nice and stiff. But for now, that is gonna do it. Me, it's also really great for um, migraines. If you get migraines, this is like, do not disturb, right? All that sunlight blocked from your eyes, letting your headache go away peacefully and calmly. Anyways, um, it is a really cute hat. I do hope a lot of you will try and make it, especially with these tips that I have provided today. But that's gonna do it. That's all I have, all the tips I have. Let me know in the comments section if you have any specific questions. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's gonna do it, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you very soon. Bye.